there is a huge platform for teachers sharing open education resources in Belgium. It's called Class Cement and we have the founder with us and uh, a researcher on Class Cement. So we're very happy to have you here. Um, Hans de Fuhr is the founder. He founded Class Cement uh, actually 20 years ago. And um, we would like to know more about what is Class Cement, how did it develop over the uh, basically decades now <laughs> and uh, we would like to know uh, from uh, Bram uh, how uh, can you make teachers share when do teachers share that's what your research was about so maybe we'll start in the beginning 20 years ago what was Classement meant to be what has it grown up to uh, well, Classement is a, an educational resources network so it's a place on the internet where teachers share their resources things they have made to use in their classroom and when as soon as they think oh it's useful for others they, sh they share it at Classement. Um, in those 20 years of course we have grown a lot uh, at the moment we have almost 150,000 users uh, part of them are teachers but we also have parents students and teacher training uh, organizations sharing what they have done activities and so that, that they want to promote so for teachers uh, but all in all we have more than 50% uh, of all teachers in Flanders is a member of the portal so re registration is free and as soon as they register they can download they can search and download their content and uh, more, a little bit more than 10% also upload so that's yeah, we try to motivate to engage them that they start sharing um, and it's also it's a social network, a part of it, because they all have uh, their, pr their own profile. They, we can see from each other where they teach, what subjects they teach. They can comment and rate on the content. Uh, so it's really a lively, interactive platform that is well used in, in Flanders by now. And since uh, 2013. Uh, it's part of the Ministry of Education. So I started a long time ago as a teacher of mathematics and IT together with my students. Then some teachers voluntarily started helping. Uh, since 2002, we have support from the Ministry as a non-profit organization. And since five years now, we are part of the Ministry. Mm -hmm. You did some research on uh, the teachers and when they get engaged. So we learned 10%, which is pretty good, I think. Uh, why do these 10% share and the other 90% don't? Yes, uh, I'm the head of user experience at Classement, so when I had to do a master thesis to get my degree as a master of educational science, um, it was, yeah, it was for me, it was a no-brainer to choose why teachers share as a topic for my thesis, because I was very intrigued by it. And the results show that both the platform, so the, the online system where teachers can share, uh, it, it has an influence, but also the teacher itself and their motivations and their thoughts. So on the one hand, on, on the side of the platform, it has to be easy to use and teachers have to find useful resources on the platform. So having a good basis of quality resources mm -hmm. is essential to get other teachers, mm -hmm. teachers, uh, teachers to share as well. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, uh, it, it might not be such a big surprise but the altruism of users mm -hmm. of teachers mm -hmm. is the biggest factor that influences their intention to share yeah no surprises there i think people who like to share do um, and on the other hand their what we call knowledge self-efficacy so their own beliefs and thoughts about themselves and if they can create OER that are worth sharing for other teachers, that's one of the main drivers for the intention to share as well. That's interesting and um, sometimes maybe it makes you skeptical if you can influence anything of these factors because you cannot make someone more altruistic, or can you? Yeah, that's true. Um, one might think, well, that's, that's a problem yeah. because how can you make people more altruistic? That's, that's so strange. But my job as, as a, a user experience designer uh, at Classement is trying to find those little tweaks that actually do make people share. Uh, we found lately that just putting a profile picture next to the room where you can comment, just putting their own profile picture there, increases uh, uh, people uh, intention to write a comment or give feedback. Just putting a profile picture there. And it's these all these little tiny nudges that you use to get people to interact if you combine all of them together then you can really push the needle 
uh, towards uh, sharing. And we're really uh, very into uh, searching and, and doing research on what can we change in doing tests. Uh, it's like Facebook and Google do, but we do it for good. <laughs> so maybe one more question for Hans. Um, I sometimes think uh, all over the world, at least in Germany, every day someone thinks I have to start a new platform. <laughs> so <laughs> you have uh, 20 years of experience. What are the lessons learned? What would you uh, change if you could travel back in time and restart your work? Oh, uh, I don't know if I don't want to change some things because I, it's quite a success story. You can't uh, complain. We also have the support from the ministry also since 2002 and that makes a lot of difference. Um, Even when I started, of course, there were a lot of other teachers in 1998, 1999, having their websites sharing educational documents or, or collecting hyperlinks. But we, we started to contact each other and to make one platform as big as possible. So I tried to convince mm -hmm. teachers, let's work together. And that worked. And then... How did you convince them? Yeah, by visiting them, by, okay. by, sh by showing them some examples of, of, of advantages. Uh, Sometimes also by rewarding, we yeah. give uh, give some awards and and then the, yeah and also we were we were still a, a grassroots project with with students and that helped a lot as well. It was really kind of friendly project and and uh, trying to help each other by by going to fairs uh, and it was was the beginning of of the internet as well. So uh, it would it, it's better to make one big project and several projects next to each other next to each other and that helped a lot and then yeah as soon as you get the support from the government once a teacher goes to the government and says yeah look look i have a good idea can we start this day they, they always said yeah we're good to talk with class Men because we are supporting them already so from then on yeah the, we're the only one place where teachers can find their content and also other organizations are now starting to contact us if they want a database with their educational documents they don't create their own database anymore they just use class Men as the content management system to put their resources online um, and it's also the communication. Um, from the beginning on, we always uh, talked about it's your portal. Uh, you are the ones who are doing it. As a user, you are the content. You are the most important one. We only have the, the system, the interface, but if it would be empty if you don't share. Uh, so we really thankful and grateful for everything they do. We also reward them still. Mm -hmm. um, so we, are on, on a, we call it the horizontal level. Uh, so we are a teacher in our team. And the, the ones who are sharing are also teachers, so we also we don't judge them on pedagogical level or so. If, if, if they think it's good, it will be uploaded and the crowd will decide. They can say it's, it's good or, or not. The only thing we do, we have a team of about 10 validators. Um, so we, we check the uh, spelling mistakes or so, and mm -hmm. we, we contact them if there's something wrong there. Uh, and of course we check copyright because yeah, it's an open platform, you can't uh, violate copyright issues. But then as soon as that's okay, it's shared on an open license, Creative Commons, and then everybody can use it. Do you have a default license? Uh, since uh, some months we have default CC BY. We used to have CC BY and CSA, but now we choose a, we're choosing CC BY because that's the most open license. Yeah. They, can, they still can change, they can choose every license, but we promote CC BY. Okay, so you have this this team of validators, and uh, is the community uh, in some way validating or rating the resources? Um, whenever uh, a teacher downloads a resource, or if they uh, they can give scores, mm -hmm. uh, they g can give reaction. And uh, for a couple of weeks now, it's it's quite recent. Uh, we've built an algorithm mm -hmm. when people search, mm -hmm. and that algorithm sorts the resources. Uh, on one hand, by the the most recent are on top mm -hmm. because we don't have any. Uh, scores or, or we don't have any reactions so they should be on top but if a resource is really well uh, received mm -hmm. by um, by the community we put it on top as well so the algorithm uh, makes it a mix of new and well received uh, resources on top uh, and in the sorting order how, how do you measure well received Uh, 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 the, the algorithm is quite difficult, <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> quite long, uh, but we, um, uh, we keep in mind uh, the scores and how many people have viewed it okay. compared to how many scores it has okay. and what the actual 
score is and we only um, use the score if we know there's uh, enough people giving a score okay. because a, a score given by one person isn't really a, a reliable score of uh, course. Do many people give a score because I can imagine there are I don't know two or three weeks between when you download the material and you have uh, tried it out in your classroom and you made some experiences and you reflected on uh, if it was useful or not and then people are long gone. Uh, again, here you have to build your platform yeah. to get people to give scores. One of the main um, uh, things that, that people complained about is in the past people had to download a resource like a Word document for mm -hmm. instance and then they had to open it in the program and mm -hmm. see what it contains. So, so one of the, the things people told us that's that's a hassle, it takes time and I don't always find the document I've downloaded. So we've created previews, mm -hmm. so now people can push a button and they see a preview of the contents of the document, but in that preview there's a little bar on top next to the download button. There's In that bar there's the scoring mechanism and just putting the scoring yeah. right next to downloading increased our uh, number of scores it skyrocketed. So it's these little design tweaks, thinking what does our user want, yeah. what is the, what are the things we need and uh, we needed to scores to get the sorting done, and how can we build our platform to to be as good for the user and for us as well. Yeah. It's really interesting. What's your uh, next steps? Yeah, the, the first next step is we're going to release a new website. Mm -hmm. So. Um, all the user interviews, all the designing, all the prototyping has been done. So in the background, there is this nice shiny new website that only the development team uh, knows about uh, by now and, and the classement team. And we're going to program it now. We have to connect the HTML prototype to the database. And once that is done, we can re release it to the public. And that will be somewhere between now and a couple of months. So in 2018, we want to um, yeah, get the new version of Classement out that also works well on uh, a mobile phone because the, mm. the version that we now have is from 2013 yeah. and didn't have that. Anything else we should talk about when it comes to Classement? The network part is something that I also find really important because yeah, they, they have their profile page. You can see what they are doing, like I told already. Uh, but I think we, we can do a lot more there to, to connect people, uh, to not only search for resources, but also search for people based on their experience, based on their expertise, uh, and, and then trying to connect them more. Uh, we did some research on that as well. Some people, we know, like it, some people won't, because yeah, the social network, it can be sometimes difficult, and, and also on privacy. Uh, but I think if you, if you communicate it, and if you listen really well to your users, we can mm -hmm. do a lot more there. Um, and then we have another thing that is always interesting when we talk about classement in, uh, abroad is our point system. Um, uh, it, it triggers people, not uh, some of them, to share more. It, it's a, when you register, you receive 1,000 points, credits. Mm -hmm. uh, and when you look at content, um, uh, uh, you lose two points. So that means you can look at 500 different learning objects. Uh, but meanwhile, um, you can earn points. So I, I always say the more you look at content, the more chances you get to earn points because giving a score, uh, giving a comment, mm -hmm. uploading, mm -hmm. uploading means you receive 70 to 100 points. So we stimulate by the point system, we stimulate people to share. And that's also um, for us the system to look at uh, when we want to give some rewards to, to, to people. Uh, so that point system, as soon as they only have 150 points left, they receive automatically an email. For some people, it's for the first time they realize there's something like a point yeah. system, but that triggers them that to start sharing or commenting already, and then that helps people to be part of the network. That's interesting. Can uh, our viewers take next steps? Can, can they take a look at the website, or is it only uh, for registration for, for your teachers? No, Classement is open for everyone, and the interface is completely translated in English. Of course, most of the resources on Classement are in Dutch, so if people want to uh, visit and, and see how it works, mm -hmm. please come, register, it's uh, quite an easy process, um, and they can see. And we also have um, resources in other languages coming from other European projects, mm -hmm. but the majority is in Dutch.
Okay, so go out there, register on the website, take a look for yourselves. Thank you very much. All the best for your work. Uh, you. Maybe talk again 20 years from now. No, earlier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks. Bye. Bye.